Hi, welcome back. It's Mark from Apprentice One to One and PowerSonic. And in today's video, we're going to be installing some electrical equipment into a garage that's been converted to, um, it's going to be a home office slash bar in the end, but it's a bit of a home build project. So there's some of the other construction work that might not be uh, to the usual standards that you are typically going to see out on site. So keep that in mind. Hopefully the electrical work meets the, the required level. And I've got a colleague with me today. He has some interesting opinions and you can check out what they are later on in the video. We run through a whole sequence of tests on the circuits we've installed and um, also have a little chat through some of the work we've done along the way as well and a bit of a van chat on the way home. So we'll cut straight to it. Hope you enjoy the video and um, please drop in the comments if you've got anything you want to ask or any input on this and it's all greatly received. Thanks to everyone who is subscribing to the channel, it means a lot and um, please keep that going. If you were a first time viewer, click that subscribe button, it makes a massive difference. And yeah, let's get straight to it. Okay, so for today's um, fun and games, we've got a, a nice garage conversion that's been going on and um, it's at this stage now. It's not something we've been involved with until this point and the customer uh, wants a bit of power and a light popping up. Obviously this is temporary because they've still got to do the plastering and things. There is a little loft space as well up here, which um, I'm not sure I'll fit in there, but my esteemed colleague who's with me should do. So I can shove him up with a broom and he can go and get on with that. Uh, construction is this side. We've got a timber wall, so the garage, old garage doors are just the other side of there. And the rest of it's block and it's been framed off uh, from the wall. So there is a little gap behind here. Um, we've got a 4mm steel wire armour coming over, it's currently on a um, 32 amp breaker, it's not a long run, it's about 4 metres from the house to here, and uh, yeah, main board in, inside the property is um, on an RCD already, so it's split load board, and uh, yeah, we're just going to pop a little consumer unit in, get these sockets and lights wired, I'll maybe pop the phone on a, on a time lapse, and um, you can watch us cracking on getting through it, I'll catch up with you in a bit. So I stripped the old um, junction box where the cable came in. The old fuse box was in a different place in the garage before this door was in. Um, there was a consumer unit there of some sort and it was extended off this point. We could put our consumer unit down here but it's a little bit low and um, yeah I'd rather get it a bit higher up the wall. So we're going to put another another junction box in, re gland this because it was not the best and it was also over sheathed with, with this steel pipe for some reason so i'll get that glanded up in the box and then we'll shift it up the wall a bit to the new consumer unit and uh yeah start wiring it out about ready to do some testing now um got the board dressed away this is what i've done down here so we have dropped dropped the swa down a bit because it wasn't cut in the best way so i've had to redo it and then just loop through with some way goes in six mil up to the new consumer unit and then the steel wire armour cleated with some concrete hex screws there and there. And we've got the sockets on them ready to wire. I'm using these, I don't know if you can see them here, but the D-line fire clips. All of this is going to be behind the finished wall surface in the end, but um, didn't hurt to use it. I don't know if you've used them before, but there's one here. They just kind of wrap around, go through the little um, tab there. That folds back and locks it in place. We've got just the one temporary pendant at the back here for now. You can see we've dropped down in conduit to the flush mount socket outlets. And again, we've just popped some of the D-line fixings on. Matthew's doing that over there now, actually, on some of the other ones. So you can see these are just loose for the time being. So they drop straight down into the sockets. If they're ever an issue, you can drop another cable down should you need to, because obviously once these are boarded and finished, it's a bit of a faff. Although there is a a void behind these. Gives them a bit of extra protection as well, should Mr Mouse find his way back there. Uh, yeah, quite straightforward. Um, up in the loft space, I'm not going to go up there, but there's a single light fitting that we've popped in with a switch. It's just storage up there. So there's a little light up there. Got the two gang light switch here. Run out of black couplers, but again, not going to be unsure. So we've got one for inside, one for outside. There's a little lantern light going on the outside wall. Matthew don't mind the recording going on, he's doing his work anyway. So we've got these socket fronts to put on. You can see here he's popped one of these on, just to give it a bit of something fixed behind the wall so it's not wafting around back there if anyone is to try and draw a cable up it. 
So yeah, gonna get on with a bit of testing on this board now. We can do our R1, R2 as an insulation resistance tests, and then we can do some live testing on the sockets and the light fitting, and then we're gonna leave it dead while the next stage of the building work gets done. And that'll be us for the day. So I'll catch up with you in a minute. So a little bit of a closer look up in there, you can see I've used one of the piranha nuts and um, we've dropped a little earth fly lead on there as well. So that's all nicely uh, covered off. And uh, yeah, we'll jump back on with the rest of it. You can see in here I've looped out the CPC on the lighting circuit into the um, top of the MCB with a line. Switched off, obviously, safe isolation inside. And we're going to do an R1, R2 test at the end point on this lighting circuit. Matthew's over here, ready. And you can see we've got the TIS probe in the end of the pendant onto the earth. And hopefully you'll get us a value. 0.61. 0 0.61. So that's given us our continuity of um, R1, R2 on this lighting circuit. And we'll now repeat that with the line and neutral as well, just so we know we've got the right polarity down there. You can see I've dropped in the neutral with the line. Now I'm going to repeat that test at the fit in. Some call this a missing test. When you do an initial verification, you should do it. So we've got the light mate in there, and Matthew's got as a result on the test set, which um, tallies up with what we'd expect underneath what you're measuring for R1, R2. Obviously, because we've got um, a larger conductor on the neutral than the CPC. So we'll jump on with a testing um, on the socket circuit now. So we've moved on to the socket circuit now and you can see I've linked out the um, line and the CPC in here again for our R1, R2 on this little socket radial. And if Matthew jumps in and gets us a value on this one, so this is the first socket and different to a ring final circuit, these values should increase as we move down the radial. So what do we get there? 0 0.06. Okay, so we're a little bit further along into the circuit now. And 0 0.24. There's only another two or three sockets, but it's important to get them at all of them. And again, we'll repeat this with a neutral. Not really a missing test on initial verification because you need to check your polarity, and this is how you do it. So. We're in here, and again, these are just temporary socket fronts. So we can do the testing for today and make sure we're happy with it before it gets boarded over. Um, it's just a nice thing to do, I think. Finishes it off. And uh, yeah, that's the R1, R2 of the lights and the sockets complete. We've done the IR through um, the board, so we can move on to some live tests and we'll demonstrate doing that safely without access to any live parts um, and just drop back in in a second. So yeah, we can demonstrate an insulation resistance test with um, this little setup we've got here. You'll see I've crock clipped onto the neutral bar. Main switch is off. It's isolated inside anyway, but it's off. So we can have no interference from anything external. Both of these two are on. So essentially they'll be joined together through the buzz bar. And first up, we're gonna check IR between uh, line and neutral. So if we jump on, to that we can set it to 500 volts because there's nothing else connected and uh, yeah I can hold that in there hit the old test button it's doing its test now and we're getting the old clear so grand and then likewise we can now flip that over onto the earth and the same thing because we're doing the global test, I'll hold that on there again. Hit test. The batteries are getting a bit low. You see there, that's cleared as well. And then finally, if I switch over again onto the neutral. Hit test again. And you'll see it's cleared. That was at 500 volts and that's essentially it so we've checked the insulation resistance between line and neutral uh, between line and earth and then earth and neutral and it's all clear and dandy so we'll move on with the rest of the testing right so we've got the supply back on down to the garage now and we're going to check for the um, pfc and the zdb here so it's not ZD, zdb and we're having to do the three lead no trick test because there's an upfront RCD in the house, as we said earlier on in the video. So I'm going to do this now again, GS38 probes, stick a pair of gloves on and goggles if you wish. Uh, I have in this instance, 
and if we pop them on here and if I just jump back because I already carried out the test off camera and you'll see here you are measuring voltage between neutral and line of 240 volts and between line and protective air. If I hit the test button now, it should cycle through those tests. And again, I'm exposing myself to as little danger as possible by using the GS38 probes and trying to keep myself away from these parts. And you'll see here, we've got a measurement of 0 0.18 between line and neutral. I can put these off now and um, 0 0.39 line and protective air and we've got the PFC coming out at 971 amps at the top there and the difference with this when you're not doing ZE of course because we're not at the supply intake this is just um, a, ring, a final distribution circuit to this so it's a ZDB but we'll move on with some of the other live tests now I've got the power on now and you can see we've got no access to any of these live terminals at all and uh, we've simply clipped into this QTEC adapter that's into the, the ceiling rows and we're into the test set. Matthew's going to hit test now. Let's move it a bit this way and then I can see it. I can see that it's running through its test sequence to give us ZS um, at this end point. It's having a little think because we're on the no trip setting. And you'll see there we've come out at 0 0.98 between live and protective air which is sort of what we'd expect based on the, the dead tests as well. I mean, there's always a difference between what you'll actually measure um, and what we'll calculate out. That's the reason we do measure. So you want to jump over here, Matthew, and just pop the probes in that I've plugged into this socket outlet. And we can check that one. So you can see we've got the cover on at the consumer unit. Everything's covered up. And like I said, no access to any of the bitey stuff. So all these arguments about live testing and not exposing people to danger, we've installed that with a circuit dead and then uh, come to do the test and we'll obviously isolate the power and remove it before we do our functional checks at the end. So you can see this is the end point of the circuit. We will get a ZS measurement at all of the socket points as well just because really. And you'll see here we've got 0 0.68 between line and neutral and 1.07 on the live and protective earth and again that's what we'd expect to see based on the dead test measurements and what we know the supply circuit down to here is for its R1 and R2 and then it's uh, ZDB and uh, yeah just popped a couple of the plastic blanks in for the time being we're going to switch them over in a minute just so we could uh, crack on with these tests I had them in my bag so that's why they're in there you can see we've got the B20 on the socket circuit and the B6 on the lighting circuit just a um, low power usage down here uh, the heating circuit's going to go in later on that's actually going to be mounted up in the loft it's some air blown heating system i'm not exactly sure what that is but we've dropped a, a cable in ready to do that at a later stage and uh, we'll sort that out then matthew's just zipping around getting his zs's all right so we've got the um, test set set up now ready to go and do an auto rcd test we're plugged in and ready to go if i hit the test button you can see it's um, done its one time test first. Matthew's just reset it. And we're now on to the five times. You see these times are tripping just fine. Hopefully it'll hold at the half time at the end. See it has done there. And it has done over there. And we've got the, the pass. So that's fantastic. And uh, yeah, well within all the tripping times that are required. So we can uh, store that one for later. And uh, yeah, just a simple test procedure we've run through on this job uh, to make sure we're all safe obviously with the supply cable down here we've done tests on as well but we can't film inside so um, yeah you'll have to trust us on that one I'm gonna get this labeled up and tidied up now so it's all ready for the next phase of the construction work we'll leave it locked off and ready to go um, yeah it was just one of these where we had time today to move this on as far as we can so why not and uh, yeah we'll catch up with you later we'll check now we've got the functional checks to do so we've been through the test procedure and we're just going to check that things actually do supply electricity and stuff works so we're all labeled up on the board now still got to stick my little um label on there to show there's live terminations within it so we'll do that as well matthew just want to flick the lights on in here and we can see illumination and again there is a light switch up there that um, should work if Matthew just wants to quickly whip up and turn that on so 
and we can prove that as well while we're here through the hatch of doom so yeah, that's popped on up there so that's that one all great uh, outside lights not on yet we've got that in a in a box adaptable box outside made safe so that's ready to go once it um, turns up and we're ready to come and liven all this up at completion you can see we've got the little tester in here just to show we've got voltage at the sockets and uh, it does its little internal loop check as well it's giving us a good green light we're going to get the hoover plugged in and do a bit of tidying up down this end so we can uh, test the sockets out as well with the hoover make sure we're all working yeah otherwise we'll have a little chat in the van after this and that's about wrapped it up just the test sheet to complete and uh, jobs are good in so we're on our way back now over the bridge so this is the the humber bridge for anyone who's not familiar with the area you'll see over there we've got the humber estuary and i've got somebody with me who wrote one of the files of research onto the um humber bridge and that's matthew when he was about seven years old uh, he did a little research paper for his school project that is still folklore at that junior school i think it's not been anything written better since then but yeah that was a nice little install we had there a simple garage wire up so it's been converted by the actual owner some of the other construction work there is is questionable but at least they got an electrician in to do with the uh the wiring so that was good and uh yeah so i hope you found that interesting and, and useful. Matthew, who's the best electrician on YouTube? Oh, without a doubt, it's got to be Nick Monday. Okay, so it's oh, obvious, I said you. obvious I obviously I'm not considered a YouTube electrician as yet. Um, can't be the case. But yeah, no, it's a, it's a bit of fun and um, we're enjoying doing some YouTube. We might get Matthew in a few more videos. He really likes being on YouTube, so we'll get him in more regularly. Forget Corey and um, Nick, the biggest electrician in the country has got to be Matthew. Six foot six, his feet are size 15, he doesn't fit in anywhere. Um, just been trying to wedge through that loft hatch actually, that was a tricky decision because I'm too wide to get through, Matthew's too long to get through. So in the end, I just shoved him up the hole and uh, he got on with it. So, yeah, we've got over the bridge now and um, about wrapped up that video to be honest. It's important when you're doing your testing on initial verification not to be scared of the live tests and we've demonstrated a way to do that safely. Please like and subscribe to the channel and um, we will catch you all on the next one.